Chapter 1 Misty Marsh knelt on the floor in one of the bathrooms of the house she was renovating and turning into a band B. Her headphones were in, and she was swaying back and forth to the tune of Elvis singing blue suede shoes. When she worked, she only listened to Elvis. If it wasn't the king, it wasn't worth listening to. She was finishing up tiling the floor on the fourth of the upstairs bathrooms. She'd already added the three bathrooms to the first-story bedrooms. After this, all she had to do was paint the walls and collect the furniture that would go in each bedroom. She'd finished her own bedroom first, and before her best friend, Caroline, had arrived in the strange little town of Cauldron Valley, a second bedroom had been finished. Now it was just a matter of tying it all together. Misty smiled as she realized she was a full month ahead of schedule. Soon, she'd be able to open her doors, and the Cauldron Valley Band B and Spa would be open. Not that there was really a spa. There were just two hot pools in the backyard, built on springs. Maybe I should rethink the name. Misty was at work, contemplating a name change when she noticed a cowboy boot on the bathroom floor in front of her. Her eyes traveled up the boot, over a tight-fitting pair of wranglers, and straight up to a nice torso covered in plaid. It was all she could do not to lick her lips as she stared at the gorgeous hunk of man in front of her. He could be her teddy bear any day. Slowly, because she didn't want to stop looking at him, Misty sat back on her haunches and removed the headphones from her ears. Though she had to wonder why headphones went in your ears and not on your head. Probably one of those things from the 70s or 80s that was dreamed up to drive millennials crazy. There were sure enough of them. Her eyes traveled up the lean body in front of her once more. Can I help you? she asked. She could just gobble him up the way Caroline Cauldron gobbled bacon. The man seemed taken aback for a moment, but then he shoved a flyer in her face. What is the meaning of this? I don't know where you even got it, because it's not supposed to be delivered for another week, but it's an advertisement for my bed and breakfast. Do you have a problem with it? Please tell me there isn't a typo. She took the ad from him and quickly read over it, not finding anything objectionable. It's the fact that you claim there's a hot spring in your yard. There are no hot springs in Cauldron Valley, and I suggest, no, I demand, you remove that from all advertising material henceforth. Henceforth? Exactly what century do you live in? Misty got to her feet and looked into the man's eyes. Who are you again? She was sure she would have remembered the name of someone as sexy as he was if they'd ever been introduced. But who would yell at a total stranger about their advertising? I'm Micah Cunningham. I own and manage the Cauldron Inn here in town. The inn has been in my family since 1873 when it was first built. Now, who are you and why are you trying to drag tourists into this town when we all love it the way it is? Misty frowned. You mean you are the owner of the hotel in town, and you don't want tourists here? Why the heck not? The man made no sense at all, and she couldn't help but wonder why he was standing in her bathroom. Why did you just walk into my house anyway? His jaw dropped and he glared at her at the same time. I knocked. I rang the bell. You couldn't hear anything. She shrugged. I had my AirPods in. How was I supposed to hear you while I was jamming to Elvis? Elvis? he asked. I love Elvis. Me too. He started to tell her his favorite Elvis song, but he stopped. You're trying to distract me with music. Misty threw her hands up in the air. You have got to be the most exasperating human being alive. I'm not changing my advertising. Micah took a step closer to the woman, trying to intimidate her with his superior height. Despite her work attire, she was a tiny little thing that he was sure would fit into his pocket. You will change your advertisements. You have lost your ever-loving mind if you think I'm not going to advertise a natural wonder in the backyard of my band B. Do you realize the guests that could come in? She wasn't at all intimidated by him. What did she care that he was taller than her? 
She had a hammer on her tool belt, and she knew how to use it. He moved even closer, wanting to lean down and just sniff the soft scent of her hair. Why couldn't he focus on his anger and not on her? Why are you so stubborn? he asked. Misty couldn't believe this man. Why are you so unreasonable? The closer he got the more she wanted to lean into him, but they were having a fight, so that wasn't the answer, or was it? You make me want to, too, he shook his head. I don't even know what you make me want to do. She knew exactly what she wanted to do with him, and her hammer had nothing to do with it. For a moment, she considered pulling his mouth to hers and shutting him up in the most elemental way possible but she figured it would be better to at least try to discuss things rationally with him first. I think we're at an impasse, mister, what did you say your last name was? Just call me Micah. Could I perhaps convince you to come to my hotel, so I can show you my thriving business, with no hot springs? Half capacity was perfectly filled to him. His family didn't need the money the hotel brought in, and it was more of a hobby than anything at this point. Surely she'd see the rightness of not exploiting the natural beauty of Cauldron Valley. Misty pursed her lips for a moment as she thought about his offer. I'm not sure that would be a good idea. Instead, she gave in to her needs and took a step even closer to him. Wrapping her arms around his neck, she pulled him down for a kiss, not at all surprised to hear his gasp of astonishment. Men didn't expect women to make the first move as she had and she didn't even care. A kiss was all she wanted from him, and she was taking it. Why be a strong independent woman if she didn't go after what she wanted? For a moment, his lips were still under hers, and he stood rigid against her, but then his arms came around her and he kissed her back, pulling her even closer against him. Misty could feel his heart pounding, and her own nipples getting hard. When she pulled away, his lips were moist from her kiss, and his mouth was slightly open, as if he was still shocked by her actions. But he was breathing as heavily as she was. Come for dinner tonight. I'll cook, and we'll discuss your issues. Misty had never been one to mince words, though she had no doubt that she was acting shamelessly, and her mother would have a fit. But her mother was old-fashioned and determined that Misty wouldn't have the life she had, the life of a single mother with a latchkey kid. Micah seemed incapable of speaking for a moment, but finally he nodded. All right. Misty watched as he turned away from her and left the bathroom, looking a bit shell-shocked as he did. She was feeling more than she'd expected as well, her heart pounding after sharing that kiss with him. She didn't know what it was about a man in a cowboy hat, but it had been all she could do not to touch him in a way a woman really shouldn't touch a man on a few minutes' acquaintance. Her hands were drawn to parts of him she'd never touched on another man, and it was all she could do to stop them from moving of their own accord. She took a deep breath and walked down to her kitchen, hoping she'd be able to find something to cook for supper. She didn't want to have to run to the store, and she now needed food to fix for the man. Thankfully, she was a great cook, and she could make something out of most anything. In the kitchen she found she'd gotten ground beef out for supper and she promptly decided to make a hungry boy's casserole recipe she'd found on the Pillsbury website. She wanted to offer suppers to the people coming to the bed and breakfast as needed, and it was a recipe that had stood out to her as something she wanted to try. Having a plan in place, she hurried back up to the bathroom she'd been working on, plugging Elvis back into her ears. She found she couldn't appreciate the music the way she had been though. Her mind was still on Micah and the way his butt looked in a pair of Wranglers. The man was definitely heart-stoppingly gorgeous. Asterisk. Micah walked back into the cauldron inn, ignoring his sister Rebecca, as he walked past. He saw her do something out of the corner of his eye, but he couldn't quite make out what it was. It didn't matter anyway. He had no head for business at that moment. He wasn't sure he had a head at all because all of his blood had rushed to another portion of his anatomy when the woman he was yelling at had kissed him. What had made her just grab him and kiss him that way, he may never know, but he knew that his life would be forever changed by that simple kiss. Simple? 
He didn't know who he was trying to fool, but that kiss had been anything but simple. In his office, he plopped down in his leather executive chair and stared off into space for a moment, recalling the strange events of the past hour. He was having dinner with the woman who wanted to ruin Cauldron Valley. He wasn't sure how it had happened, or what he'd been thinking to allow it to happen. But truthfully, he hadn't been thinking. The blood had been gone from his brain. He'd spotted Misty kneeling on the floor in that bathroom, and his brain had run away, and it still hadn't come back to him. She obviously knew what she was doing, because the entire town was abuzz with her insistence on completely renovating the house herself. The house had been vacant for as long as he could remember, and then suddenly she'd lived there. She claimed her godmother had left it to her, at least that's what the rumors said, but he didn't know who had owned it before her, and neither did anyone else in town. It all seemed very odd to him. He sighed dramatically. Now that he was coming down from the high of kissing her, he wasn't quite certain why he'd agreed to have supper with her. Maybe he would be able to convince her of the rightness of what he was saying over supper. Surely, she would understand reason if he laid all the facts out for her. They didn't want to become another tourist spot. The mere thought of having tourists crawling all over Cauldron Valley made him sick to his stomach. Of course, he knew there was volcanic activity in town. The semi-frequent earthquakes were proof of that. But the springs were sacred. They were meant for the people of their town and no one else. Becoming a tourist hotbed was not something anyone in town wanted. Except that crazy misty person. And he didn't even know why he was having supper with her. He considered going over there to tell her he couldn't have a meal with her, but he was afraid of what would happen if they came face to face. Would he let her kiss him again? Or would he tell her she wasn't what he needed from life? He could close his eyes and picture her kneeling there on the bathroom floor, beautiful, sexy, and strong. His heart beat faster, just thinking about her. It wasn't that there were no beautiful women in Cauldron Valley, but when you'd known a woman since you were both in diapers, it was harder to look at her and think that you should marry and have babies of your own. Babies? Where had that thought come from? He wasn't ready for marriage or babies. Micah shook his head. That misty woman must be some sort of a witch or he wouldn't be so enamored of her so quickly. Of course, he ran a hotel with a witch theme, so maybe she'd just fit in with everything else around him. He could certainly picture her at his side. He got to his feet and paced, strongly considering calling her and canceling for the evening, but he didn't know her number. Besides, he didn't want to cancel. He needed to convince her that the valley didn't need any tourists. Surely, she'd see reason. And maybe she'd kiss him again in the process. As soon as Misty finished the bathroom, she ran downstairs to the room she'd chosen as her own and jumped into the shower in the accompanying bathroom. She shaved her legs, hoping that some of the paint would come off in the process, but when she was finished, there was still blue paint all over her legs. She'd had blue paint on her legs for Caroline's wedding, as well, so it seemed to be a trend for her. It was probably a trend she needed to reverse, but she'd worry about that when she was finished renovating the house. She took a minute in front of the mirror to blow dry her hair and add some lipstick, but anything more than that was overkill in her opinion. Being interested in a man did not mean turning into a fashion model, and she was too short to be one anyway. When she was in school, she'd longed to be as tall as her friend Caroline, but now that she was a little older, she realized that she was just fine the way she was. If she was taller, she might not be able to squeeze into some of the places she needed to go to make her repairs, and that would never do. She hurried into the kitchen and browned her ground beef with some onion, celery, and bell peppers. When it was done, she mixed some tomato paste into the already cooked ingredients. Then she whipped up the biscuit recipe she'd made for herself and her mother when she was old enough to learn to cook, though the hungry man recipe said she needed to use refrigerated biscuits. Hers were better, so she'd make them instead. Her mother had not been interested in cooking at all, and as a preteen, Misty had taught herself to cook, 
rather than eating out of a can for every meal. After that, she'd been in charge of all meals in their home. After adding in the beans, water, and paprika, she put the biscuits she'd made on top and popped it all into the oven. Normally for company, she'd make something fancier than a casserole, but she'd been tiling bathrooms all day. He couldn't expect more from her than that, could he? She was surprised at how nervous she was at the prospect of him coming over for supper. She'd never cooked for a man before, but it was so much more than that. Micah, well, he was something special. She could feel it the first time she'd laid eyes on him. He was a little annoying, but what man wasn't? Misty set the timer on the oven before wandering through the house, something she did every evening. She pulled her phone out and made notes of all the things that still needed to be done before she was ready to open in another couple of months. She was getting close. So close, and she couldn't wait until her dream finally came through and she was the proprietor of a bed and breakfast. Misty's house? She tapped the note into her phone, still trying to figure out what she wanted to call the place. She'd made her ads up with Cauldron Valley Bed and Breakfast for the business name, but she still wasn't sure it was what she wanted to call it. Something would come to her though. She was sure of it. Just as a knock sounded at the door, Misty pulled the food out of the oven and set it atop the stove. She wiped her hands on a kitchen towel and went to the front door, where Micah was standing waiting for her. He looked a little confused, but Misty liked it that way. If he could just stay flustered, they could have a nice evening without having to argue about tourism in Cauldron Valley. Come in. She opened the door wide and saw that he'd brought her flowers and a bottle of raspberry lemonade. Thank you. She hadn't expected the gifts, and they made her smile. I know people usually bring wine, but I'm not much of a drinker. Micah shifted from foot to foot nervously. I'm not either, so that's just fine with me. She took the flowers and headed toward the kitchen for a vase, leaving him to trail behind her carrying the lemonade. Supper's ready. I just took it out of the oven. It's nothing fancy, because I had to finish up that floor before I could cook, but I think you'll find it edible. Micah nodded, before realizing she couldn't see him. The woman certainly did fluster him. It smells wonderful. It was sure better than what he'd have made for himself if he'd been home. Thank you. I made it myself. She walked over to the sink and reached for a vase in a cabinet off to the right from the sink. Filling it with water, she carefully arranged the flowers in the vase and put it into the center of the kitchen table. I thought we'd eat in here rather than the dining room, if you don't mind. I haven't completely finished the dining room yet, and this feels more intimate anyway. I don't mind at all. Micah was still a little bewildered by Misty, but he wasn't a man who cared for formality. If he was, he certainly wouldn't wear a cowboy hat to work when he was the owner and manager of the hotel. Misty smiled at him over her shoulder, before dishing up two big helpings of the casserole. This is a recipe I've been wanting to try. I figure when the bed and breakfast is opened, I'll offer meals in the evenings to people who want them. I love to cook, and it'll give me a little extra revenue. Having the house mortgage-free was going to help a lot with her expenses, but she did have to eat and pay for the utilities. And her car needed to be maintained, but there was no payment on it. She did everything she could to live a debt-free lifestyle. Credit cards made her nervous. That's not a bad idea, he said. We have a restaurant in the hotel, and we do a pretty good business from the people staying there. We don't often get people coming in from town, but that doesn't bother me at all. He liked it better when the hotel was quiet anyway. It just felt better to him. How did you come to be manager of the hotel? Misty asked as she set the plates on the table and filled two glasses with the lemonade. He didn't seem like the right man for the job, no matter which way she looked at it. He shrugged. It's been in my family for generations. I've known since the day I was born that it would be mine to run one day. I took it over four years ago, as soon as I finished my degree in business. 
Where did you go for your degree? Misty asked. She was always a little intimidated by people with degrees, because she'd chosen to apprentice rather than going to a post-secondary school. I did an online degree through the University of Montana. My dad insisted I work everything in the hotel before taking it over, so I did housekeeping, worked the front desk, worked in the restaurant, the whole nine yards. I needed to be close to home for those jobs, so it was easier if I did the courses online. Now I run the place, and I have to agree that I'm a better manager for it. Misty nodded, her eyes full of excitement. It was so good to know he'd worked his way up instead of having the business handed to him on the silver platter. He'd understand her better that way. I think that's good. I don't think anyone should ever be a manager unless they've done all the jobs leading up to the title. They need to know what the people below them are feeling as they go. Yes, I agree, Micah said. I didn't think so at the time, but now that I've done it all, I am a better manager for it. He took his first bite of his food and smiled. This is really good. Definitely something you should serve to your guests. Thank you. I like it too. I hate when a new recipe is a flop. Micah wiped his mouth and studied her. So, you're doing all the remodeling and you can cook? Are you some sort of a marvel? He looked around the kitchen, noting that there was little in it that seemed to be outdated. The counters and tile floor were beautiful. She laughed. Not at all. I just enjoy working with my hands, and I like to cook. I'm not so sure that you're not really special if you can do all that. I'm glad you think so. Misty grinned at him, thrilled he saw her as special. The man made her warm in all the right places, and she couldn't wait to get to know him better. Chapter 2 After supper, Misty immediately loaded the dishwasher, surprised Micah hadn't brought up the hot springs again. Not that she was complaining. She had no desire to keep fighting with him. She would rather find other things to do with him that involved, well, less talking and more action. After finishing up the dishes, they went into the living room where she had a few games on a table. He picked up the top one and smiled. Are you a Monopoly fan? It's my all-time favorite game. I always try to sucker people into a game. He raised an eyebrow. Why would it be suckering? She shrugged, not willing to openly admit to the man that she cheated. He'd figure that out for himself soon enough. Because no one likes to play those long games. I'm willing if you are. Really? Misty was surprised. So few people were willing to play Monopoly nowadays, and she would love to play and stare into his eyes. He nodded. Sure. I love Monopoly. Let's play in the dining room then. She led him into the room, and he looked around him, nodding. You've already started working your magic in here, I see, Micah said. The room had a fresh coat of paint, and there was a modern light fixture. There were paint splatters that matched her knees on the floor, and he was sure she'd be replacing the flooring with something different. Are you putting tile in here? She nodded. This was one of my first rooms I did. Everyone will be in this room at least for breakfast every day, so it needed to look the best out of all of them. I'd have finished the floor already, but it's taking a while for the tile I chose to come in. That makes a lot of sense. I'm impressed with your business acumen. Where did you go to college? Misty shook her head. I didn't. Instead, I apprenticed with different masters in different occupations. I worked with an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, and even a pool repair guy. I always knew I wanted to one day own a band B, and I wanted to be able to handle all repairs for myself. Then this house was dropped into my lap, and I'm doing all the renovations. I'm so glad I spent so many years learning everything I could. She spread out the game board and chose her favorite token, the wheelbarrow. She never lost when she was wheelbarrow, especially when she had a stash of $500 bills hidden on the bottom of the table, always ready for a game. 
Why else would she have chosen to play in the dining room? He took a seat across from her and chose the little puppy, watching her as she gave them both their starting money. You've played this game before. Hasn't everyone? she asked. She nodded to his piece. Do you have a dog? Micah nodded. I have a Sheltie. She's my constant companion when I'm home, always content to lie at my feet. That's sweet. What's her name? Misty liked the picture in her head of him with his dog. It just seemed to fit his personality. She'd never been allowed to have a pet growing up, and she dreamed of what it would be like to have one someday. Princess. Pictures? She was genuinely curious about a dog that would have his heart, and she could tell Princess was special to him, just by the tone of his voice. He pulled out his phone and scrolled to a picture of the dog lying on the floor, his feet in the photo. Here she is. Ah. She's so sweet looking. I'll have to introduce you to her sometime. Micah realized, then, that though he'd come here to fight with her, he'd forgotten all about the hot spring. He just wanted to spend more time with her. Maybe he was losing his mind. While they played Monopoly, they talked about where they'd grown up. My dad was really particular about me and the idea of me taking over the business. I had to start working there in the summers when I was 16, and he made sure I got the dirtiest job available. He wanted me to understand what it meant to do all the lowly tasks there were. What about you? Did you work in the summers? Misty nodded, smiling. I did. From the time I was seven or eight, I had lemonade stands in the front yard every day, and I also sold cookies that I made myself. A lot of people would go out of their way to get my cookies on hot summer days. She loved the memories she and Caroline had made selling those cookies in Caroline's mother's yard. Caroline's mother had been a second mother to her because her mother worked so much. He grinned. And you didn't make cookies for me? Actually, Misty said, jumping to her feet, I made cookies just yesterday. Chocolate chip good? Yes, he said. My best friend would say they're not good if they don't have bacon chunks in them, but thankfully, I just made a small amount for her and the rest I made for a normal person to eat. Misty always made the cookies with the bacon for Caroline, though, because she knew they made her friend happy. She eats chocolate chip cookies with bacon chunks? She'll eat anything with bacon in it. Lately, she's been going on and on about how amazing bacon dipped in cream cheese frosting is. I'm sure she's lost her mind, and I'm not trying it. Misty wasn't even a little tempted to try the disgusting-sounding concoction. Micah made a face. I can't imagine even coming up with that. She's an odd one. And she constantly exercises, but she eats like garbage. She says she burns calories so she can eat more. She's always been like that though. She craves exercise as much as she craves bacon. Misty shrugged. Still, she's my bestie, and who can complain about that? Everyone needs a bestie, Micah said softly. Do you know the cauldrons? she asked, watching him carefully to see if he'd lick his fingers and raise them to the sky as she came back with a plate of cookies. Everyone in town thought that triplets were unlucky for some absurd reason, and Caroline had married one of the cauldron triplets. The strange superstition drove Misty and Caroline both mad. He nodded. Yep. I was a couple of years ahead of them in school. He remembered all six of the cauldrons, but he'd been closest to Bob, who had shared an interest in science with him. Of course, Bob had turned science into his living, and Micah had taken over the family business. Misty tilted her head to one side. You didn't lick your fingers. If he'd known the cauldrons all his life, and he didn't feel the need to lick his fingers when their name was mentioned, then he was a great deal saner than 90% of people in the odd little town. Oh, I did that when I was a kid like everyone else, but it just doesn't seem sanitary. If I was going to do that, I'd feel the need to wear a mask and gloves to keep from getting a pandemic or something. He even did his best to avoid shaking hands with people in town, 
and he kept a huge bottle of hand sanitizer on the corner of his desk, just in case he was forced to touch someone. She smiled. I approve. Caroline married Ted Cauldron, and she's getting really tired of all the finger licking in town. Micah nodded. Ted's a good guy. I have a lot of respect for him. He made a stock suggestion to me a couple of years back and I tripled my money in three months. It was amazing. He thought a lot of all of the cauldron men. Do you want milk to go with the cookies? She asked. Who could eat cookies without milk? I agree. Misty hurried back into the kitchen and poured two glasses of milk, carrying them to the table. All right. My turn, isn't it? By the time she trampled him in the game, they had learned a lot about each other, and she thought their first date was a success. She hoped he did too, because she found herself more attracted to him than she had been to any other man in her life. Every minute with him made her crave even more time with him, instead of wishing he'd go away so she could get back to what she was doing, which was what had normally happened for her. She walked him to the door, wondering if he'd try to kiss her or if she'd have to take matters into her own hands again. I had a really nice time. We need to hang out again. It was a hint for him to ask her out, and she knew it was blatant, but she really didn't care. She was going to spend more time with him come hell or high water. I would enjoy that. How about tomorrow night we do supper at my hotel? Misty nodded, excited at the idea. I'd love that. She took a step closer to him, hoping he'd finally get the hint that she needed a goodnight kiss. Micah looked down into her blue eyes and wrapped his arms around her. I think I might need to kiss you. I've been waiting all night, she said honestly. I wasn't sure if I'd have to just grab you and kiss you again. He laughed. I think I can get behind the idea with no problem. Good. She wrapped her arms around his neck and stood on tiptoe, pressing her lips to his. This time was even better than the last, because they both knew the other had enjoyed the first kiss enough to want to repeat the experience. He pulled her as close as he could and deepened the kiss, tasting the chocolate chip cookie. He groaned, not sure if it was her taste or the taste of the sweet treat that was so intoxicating, but he knew something was. Maybe it was just all that was misty. His hands roamed over her back and settled on her bottom, pulling her even closer toward him. You make me crazy. How had this woman gotten under his skin so quickly and so thoroughly? Just kiss me some more, cowboy. He chuckled as his lips went back to hers. When he finally pulled away long minutes later, he was out of breath. I'll come pick you up at six. Misty nodded, her arms still around his shoulders, and she was happy to realize his were still on her butt. Sounds good. I'll try to get all the paint off of me. Of course, she'd try. She wouldn't succeed, but she'd try. She was going to have to have her legs amputated just to make sure all the paint was gone. I did notice the paint on your legs. I wasn't sure if it was a fashion statement or not. Rest assured, nothing I do is ever a fashion statement. I have been painting a lot, and my legs are bearing the brunt of it. I should probably pretend it's a fashion statement though. Micah sighed. Why am I so sad to leave you? For the same reason I'm sad to see you go? Misty shook her head. Alas, my mama taught me that if you let a man do you before marriage, he will never respect you and will probably run away while you're pregnant leaving you to raise a child on your own. She taught you that, did she? Micah couldn't imagine his mother teaching any of her children anything like that. Misty nodded emphatically. Unfortunately. I have needs, you know. He nodded. I do too. I guess I'll need to wait for those needs. Definitely until marriage. She couldn't break her own personal code for anything. Not even his sweet kisses that she couldn't seem to get enough of. Well, I'm not quite ready to talk marriage yet, so I guess I'll say goodnight, and I'll just dream about doing you on our wedding night. Definitely think about doing me. 
It's an important step in our relationship. I can see that. Micah kissed her one more time. Oh, give me your number before I go. He wanted to be able to text her and call her instead of just showing up at the appointed time. Are you going to send me sweet texts all day? Cause I'm really not into the penis pics. He choked. I promise not to send you a penis pic. You're a good man then. She rattled off her number, which he put into his phone. When her phone dinged, she glanced and saw it was a text from him. Okay, I've got your number too then. Yup. I'll see you tomorrow night. Micah was already looking forward to seeing her again, and he hadn't even left her house yet. What was wrong with him? You will. She smiled at him and stood watching as he backed out of her driveway. If it was possible to be in love with a man you'd only known for a few hours, then she had managed it. Maybe it was just lust, but there was some L word that she was feeling for him, and she had a feeling it was more than just physical. She fell asleep that night with a smile on her face, imagining what life would be like with Micah in it. The man set her entire body on fire. Asterisk. All the next day, Misty couldn't keep her mind off of Micah and the kiss they'd shared the night before. She almost, but only almost, wished she believed sex before marriage was okay, because he made her body tingle everywhere. Her project for the day was putting new flooring into one of the bedrooms upstairs. She was trying to make each bedroom unique, with its own special floors and walls. Of course, it was a lot of work, but she didn't mind. Each room was also based on a different Elvis song. One room was covered in teddy bears. Another room was centered around blue suede shoes, and yet another was based on jailhouse rock. She hoped her guests loved Elvis as much as she did. She set an alarm on her phone to let her know when it was five, so she could get ready for her date with Micah. Just thinking the man's name had her sighing with contentment. He was truly all she'd been looking for in a man for her entire life. How could she complain about him, even a little bit? At ten till six, she was waiting in the living room, playing a mindless game on her phone while she waited for him, but she found he was as punctual as she was, there at exactly six. She'd chosen to go a little dressier than she'd been in her shorts and t-shirt the night before, instead wearing a pair of jeans to cover her paint stains and a blouse. Hopefully no one would realize she was covered with paint underneath her clothes. You ready? he asked. She nodded. I am. Well, I could be under the right circumstances. Oh? Micah asked. What circumstances are those? Well, I think I need a kiss to be completely ready. He chuckled. If I kiss you, do you really think we'll make it out the door? His passion for her ran a great deal higher than that. She nodded. We will, because I can't let you do me. Remember? What if I want to do you? He lowered his voice, using her terminology. Well, then you're going to just have to keep it in your pants. He was astonished, but only for a moment. You're not afraid to say whatever is on your mind, are you? Why would I be? Tired of waiting for his kiss, Misty fisted her hands in his shirt and pulled him down to her, kissing him. His arms came around her, and sure enough, it took less than a minute before he wanted to drag her to one of the bedrooms upstairs. We'd better get out of here before we do something I won't regret. Just one more taste, Misty murmured as she dragged his head down for one more kiss. He groaned. You're killing me. Misty rested her forehead against his shoulder, sighing dramatically. All right. Let's get out of here. He led her out to his car, which turned out to be a pickup truck. He politely opened the door for her, and when she wasn't quite tall enough to get inside, he laughed and took her by the waist, lifting her into his truck. You're a tiny little thing for being so mighty, with a hammer. I'm mighty with a lot more things than a hammer, she winked at him. You should see me with a buzz saw. He laughed. I'm sure you're fabulous with any tool you put your hands on. 
he couldn't believe how very much fun she was to be around. He was used to dates feeling like chores, and with Misty, every moment felt like a new adventure. Is that meant to be a double entendre? she asked. Cause it sure sounds like one. It's not, he said, grinning at her as he hurried around the truck. I hope you're hungry, because I intend to feed you tonight. I intend to eat. I haven't eaten anything but my own cooking in a good long while, so I'll be pleased to eat something else. He pulled into the parking lot of the hotel, and he took her hand as he walked inside with her. I don't know why I have this strange urge to wear a surgical mask every time I walk into a public building. I know it's crazy, but it's what I want to do. She smiled. It seems reasonable to me. With all the finger licking that goes on in this town, there is bound to be a pandemic sooner or later. She shuddered at the memory of the people licking their fingers. Why would they do that? I guess I should stock up on toilet paper. Why would you do that? she asked. Aren't most pandemics upper respiratory? I don't know. I just have this sudden urge to stock up on toilet paper when you mention a pandemic. I can't figure out why, but it makes sense to me. Just get some hand sanitizer, and you'll be fine. He chuckled. Well, I guess there's nothing wrong with stocking up on hand sanitizer if you won't let me stock up on TP. I do feel like I'm missing out without the TP though. I'm sure the hotel has enough to see you through though, right? Hotels had to stockpile TP. She certainly planned to stockpile it for the band B, whatever name she was going to call it. Probably. I'll have to see. He led her through the building, past the front desk. He saw his sister openly gawking at the sight of him holding hands with a woman right there in front of God and all of Cauldron County, but he didn't let it bother him. Misty was a special girl, and she deserved hand-holding. He just waved and kept on walking. Girlfriend? Misty asked, feeling a little jealous of the wave. Nah, that's my kid sister Rebecca. Well then, I guess I won't be jealous of her. Micah couldn't help the feeling of pleasure that washed over him at the idea she could be jealous of anyone over him. She was so incredible, and for her to think he was just a little special made him want to walk on air. Chapter 3 Misty felt as if everyone was staring at her as they were being led to their table at the restaurant. Thankfully, they ended up in a back corner, so other people couldn't watch them too much. She hadn't really thought about how many people he would know, but apparently, he was a very hands-on manager. As soon as they were seated, a waitress appeared at their table. What can I get you to drink? The woman looked incredibly nervous to be the one serving their boss. I just want a root beer, Misty said. She never drank carbonated beverages at home, but she let herself have the occasional treat when she was out. Micah smiled at the girl. I'll have a Sprite, and we'll take an order of garlic cheese bread, please. The waitress nodded and hurried away. Misty grinned. She's nervous around you. She's just nervous in general. She didn't want to work here, because the address was 1515, Cauldron Way. He shook his head, thinking about adding an eye roll, but he wasn't sure that was necessary to get his point across, and it felt very juvenile. What does that have to do with anything? Misty wasn't following his reasoning. Oh, you know the silly superstitions about the number 15. It always amazes me how many people buy into that nonsense. Misty blinked a few times. Most people are superstitious about the number 13. She loved the number 13 the way most people were afraid of it, but she'd been born on Friday the 13th, and she was sure that was why she embraced it. No, it's 15. Micah shrugged. Doesn't matter really, though, because I don't believe any numbers are unlucky. What if I told you I was born on Friday the 13th, she asked. I wouldn't care. Even if you were born on Wednesday the 15th, it wouldn't bother me. Misty decided not to ask any more questions, because the answers might just hurt her head. She wasn't sure how the little town she'd landed in got all the superstitions wrong, but she decided not to care. 
Tell me about the hotel. Micah laughed. You don't want to get me started on that. Sure, I do. I find it fascinating. Well, the hotel was built in 1873 by an ancestor of mine, Abigail Duncan. Abigail moved to Cauldron Valley from New York all by herself, which was unheard of back then. Her parents had died in a fire, and she didn't want to have to face their memories day after day, so she took all the money they had in the bank, and she was the only child of a very well-to-do family, and came here to build a hotel. All of the men in town were trying to get her to marry them, but she fell in love with a penniless drifter by the name of Bernard Cunningham, and she married him less than a week after first laying eyes on him. Misty grinned. That's so sweet. He nodded. I've always liked the story. He shrugged. So, the hotel has been added onto and remodeled a dozen times over the years, but the name has always stayed the same. When I took over, I added the witch stirring the cauldron in front of the hotel, and I added a lot of the superstition and magic-y things around. Every owner has put their touch on it, and that's been mine. He looked around the small restaurant, proud of what he'd done there. Do your parents like what you did? she asked. He shrugged. Dad thinks I went overboard with it, but Mom thinks it's amazing. Well, I like it. It's fun to see the white cats everywhere. What made you decide on those? Black cats she could have understood, but white. It had to be one of the weird beliefs of the town. Everything was tied to those it seemed. You know, because white cats are supposed to be unlucky. I don't believe in it, but so many people do. How did she not know about white cats and the superstition revolving around them? I've always heard black cats were unlucky. That's weird, Micah said. That must be unique to the region you grew up in. Misty shook her head. Must be. She knew it wasn't true, but the thing about Cauldron Valley people was, they believed weird things. She wasn't going to argue until she was blue in the face, to convince him of that though. She had better things to do with her time. Their drinks and appetizers arrived then. Thank you, Gina, Micah said, and the waitress nodded slightly, looking embarrassed. Do you know what you want? I do, but I don't think my beautiful date has had a chance to look at the menu yet. We were too busy talking about the hotel's history. A history he couldn't help but be proud of. Gina smiled. I just wish you could petition to have the street number changed. I can handle the white cats and the cauldrons everywhere, but the number 15 really creeps me out. Why does it creep you out? Misty asked, wondering why these people were so sure 15 was an unlucky number. Because of the superstition, Gina said. I mean, aren't you creeped out when you have to cross a street on an even-numbered day? Same thing. Cross a street on an even-numbered day? Oh, my. It gets worse by the minute. Misty just smiled. I'm not quite ready yet. Can you give us five minutes? Gina nodded and hurried away. Misty reached for a piece of the garlic bread and then she opened her menu as it cooled on her plate. What's good here? It's all good, Micah said. I really like the ribeye and the baked potato soup is out of this world. Sold, Misty said. Wasn't that easy? She picked up her garlic bread and took a big bite. Micah liked that she didn't question his taste, and she simply agreed with what he'd suggested. It was a good way to start a relationship. As soon as he thought the word, he was startled. Were they really in a relationship? Instead of asking her, he took a bite of his own garlic bread to stop up his mouth and keep from saying something he shouldn't say. He realized he was thinking more and more about asking the woman to marry him, and he wasn't sure that was a sensible thing to do. Of course, it had worked for his ancestors, and his parents too when he really thought about it, but, it was hoping for an awful lot that it would work for him as well. Misty eyed Micah curiously. Is there something on your mind? Micah started to shake his head, but instead, he decided to be honest. 
I'm sitting here seriously, thinking about asking you to marry me. It would be too early, of course, and we barely know each other, but it's like something inside of me desperately wants me to ask. She tilted her head to one side. Is that so? Her heart sped up at the very thought. Marrying him felt right. He nodded. I'm trying to decide if I'm losing my mind or if I should just go for it. He wasn't sure why he was even talking to her about it. It seemed like something he should mull over on his own, instead of discussing with her, but the words were already out of his mouth. Ted proposed to Caroline as soon as he met her. His first words were, marry me. She was looking for the men in the little white coats. Misty had been thrilled for her friend and even encouraged her to go for it, because she was sure it would make Caroline happy. But she married him. Are they happy? Misty nodded. Surprisingly, they are. I mean, I can't really speak for Ted because he doesn't tell me all his deepest darkest secrets, but Caroline is deliriously happy. She tells me she's never been happier in her life, and she should have married him ten years ago, which is ridiculous of course, but yes, she's very happy. Huh. Yup. That's what I say. She didn't even get mad at me for having blue paint on my legs for her wedding. He blinked a couple of times. Why did you have paint on your legs for her wedding? I forgot to buy turpentine, and I was running late, and I needed to get there and stop dawdling, so I went to the wedding with paint on my legs. And we wore shorts to it, so it was obvious to everyone who looked. Sounds like it was just a little bit crazy. He was almost sad to have missed the wedding, though he and Ted had never been super close. More than a little bit, Misty said, shaking her head. Caroline specifically asked me to get the paint off my legs for her wedding, too, but, I couldn't. Micah shrugged. I guess she loves you, warts and all. Blue paint and all. There are no warts. She knew he was kidding about the warts, but she needed him to know there were no warts. If he decided to marry her, she would not have warty feet or anything else that was warty. Gina came back then, and they gave their orders. As soon as she was gone, Micah asked, So how would you respond if I just popped out a marriage proposal with no warning? Misty pursed her lips, thinking about it. Well, I might think you were a little crazy, but then I'd remember that I'm totally in lust with you, and I'd probably agree. Though it would be insanity on my part. I guess I'd need to move in with you so you could still run your bed and breakfast, he said. I guess you would. Where do you live now? I have a cabin on my parents' property. Very modern, but it's a cabin nonetheless. They'd be happy to get rid of me. But Princess and I are a set. We can't be kept apart. He didn't know how she'd feel about having a dog in her band B, but he couldn't give Princess up. No, of course not. I'd never keep a man from his dog. Her mind was racing. How would Princess get along with her guests? Would that ruin everything for her? I'd probably need to meet this princess of yours before I could properly respond to your proposal though. A well-behaved dog wouldn't cause any problems. Probably, he said. Maybe you could do that tomorrow afternoon? Tomorrow's Saturday, so I won't work past noon. What about you? I don't exactly observe weekends at the moment, but I could take tomorrow afternoon to meet your sweet puppy. I'll pick you up at one. Come hungry. I'll bring a picnic lunch, and we'll eat somewhere along the way. Micah didn't tell her that his parents owned a huge ranch just outside town. It was probably best if she didn't know that. He didn't want to marry a woman just because she looked at him and saw dollar signs. The hotel was enough. Besides, his parents didn't really use their property to ranch. They just enjoyed having all the space. I will. Misty felt a flutter in her stomach at the idea. He obviously was more worried about her getting along with his dog than his parents, which was sweet in a strange sort of way. Micah kept watching her throughout the meal, thinking about what she'd look like sitting across from him at breakfast. 
thinking about how she'd look first thing in the morning with her hair all tousled, wearing nothing but a smile. He stopped himself there. His jeans were getting awfully tight, and he really didn't want his employees to notice. He ordered a piece of key lime pie for them to share, and she only took two bites, before declaring herself stuffed. He happily polished it off on his own, but he still couldn't quit watching her. Why was he thinking so much about marrying this woman he'd only met the day before? He must have lost his mind. There was no other explanation for it. Well, it was possible someone put something in the water to make them all marry fast. He knew every single one of the cauldrons had married pretty darn quick, and now he was thinking about the same thing. That had to be it. After they'd eaten, he led her out of the hotel, stopping by the fountain in the middle and placing a small rock in her hand. Make a wish. She looked at the rock and started to ask why she would throw a rock into a fountain to make a wish, when she should be throwing a coin, but she decided against it. It just took too much energy to constantly try to refute all of the strange beliefs these people had. She closed her eyes and made her wish before throwing the rock. Please let this work out between Micah and me. Her mother had always told her that there was a curse put upon the women of their family, and they were incapable of being happy in love. She knew it had been true for her mother, her grandmother, and her great-grandmother, and until that day, she believed that it had to be true for her as well. Now she had hope, and maybe with a little bit of luck on her side, she could have it all. A marriage, family, and her business. He was quiet on the drive back to her place, and she wondered what was going through his mind. When he walked her to her door, he kissed her almost absently. Had he decided he didn't want anything to do with her? She couldn't figure out what had just happened. She stood in her doorway and watched him drive away, convinced he hated her. She wasn't sure what had happened between the fountain and the hotel and her home, which was a two-minute drive from the hotel. Something had apparently. She worried the entire time she was getting ready for bed, and just as she was climbing between the sheets, she got a text. Sleep well. She frowned. Micah texted her to sleep well after acting strangely? How odd. You too. You're not mad at me? Why would I be mad? You haven't done anything to make me mad. You were acting strangely when you dropped me off. I'm sorry. I have a lot on my mind. We'll talk about it all tomorrow. All right. Good night. As oddly as Misty felt about it, she knew she couldn't push him. Whatever it was, he'd let her know when it was time, if it ever was time. She just hoped he wasn't upset with her about something and not sure how to bring it up. Asterisk. Micah barely slept at all that night, instead he paced, thinking about everything. He was ready to propose to Misty, and it made no sense at all. Yes, part of it was that he wanted to sleep with her, and she'd made it plain that was the only way she was willing, but the other part of it was that he truly wanted to be with her. He thought of her when he woke up in the morning, and again as he was going to bed at night. She was filling his every thought. There had to be more for his feelings for her than just lust. For one thing, he genuinely enjoyed spending time with her. That had never happened with a girl before Misty. When he was with her, he wasn't spacing out and nodding, pretending to listen. He was actually enjoying every moment with her, and he was thrilled they had the time together. It was very different than what he was used to. No, it was definitely time to ask her to be his wife. What did it matter that they'd only known one another for 48 hours? It didn't to him. His parents would definitely agree with it, but he'd introduce her to them the following day as well, and whatever they thought, he would have a ring in his pocket. She was tiny with delicate hands, so he would figure out a ring size based on small hands. Surely someone could help him. He was going to do it. A proposal was imminent because there was nothing else that he could do. He fell asleep with Princess snuggled against him and a smile on his lips as he thought about the days, weeks, months, and years ahead of him with Misty at his side. 
He could go through anything, even the influx of tourists in their town, if she was on his arm. Life would be better every day for seeing her face. Chapter 4 Misty woke the next morning, still feeling a sense of doom hanging over her. She didn't know why, but she was certain her relationship with Micah, if that was even what it could be called, was over. She put a breakfast casserole, chock full of bacon, into her crock pot. She'd call Caroline sometime shortly before noon and tell her that she had bacon waiting for her. Her friend would come running, and they would have a chance to talk. Misty really needed advice on the right thing to do. Never before had she felt like her emotions were so twisted up over a man. She spent the morning measuring for curtains in the upstairs rooms so she could get the fabric she needed when she went to Helena on Monday. There were no fabric stores in their little town, and as much as she wished things were more convenient, she certainly understood the appeal of keeping the town small. She would, of course, sew the curtains first. She'd learned early on that she needed to be a Jane of all trades if she wanted to get everything she needed to do done, and she didn't want to waste a lot of money hiring out. During the day, she would apprentice with men who would teach her different building trades, and in the evenings, she would take sewing courses. She even took a few baking courses, though she'd been baking since childhood. Knowing she wanted to own a bed and breakfast someday made her willing to learn every skill possible. It was just after eleven when she called Caroline. Hello? Misty could tell her friend was still sleeping. She wanted to feel bad for waking Caroline up, but she didn't. Misty needed her friend, and Misty would be available for Caroline in the middle of the night with no problem. I'm sorry to wake you, but I really need to talk. I have bacon. Misty knew better than to say it was a casserole with bacon, because Caroline would just want the bacon by itself. She had reserved a few pieces, but not as much as her friend would want. Uh, yeah. Of course. There was a sound of fumbling. Just give me a minute to get dressed, and I'll jog over. When the phone went dead, Misty didn't even think anything of it. She knew her friend well enough to know that she cared and would be there in a few minutes. She was just groggy and tired. Eleven in the morning was incredibly early for Caroline. Misty poured a glass of juice, knowing it would be the only semi-healthy thing that Caroline put in her mouth all day. Caroline wanted bacon for three meals a day, plus she'd eat it for snacks as well. Truthfully, Caroline wanted everything that wasn't good for her and nothing that was good. That's why she ran. To offset all the calories she scarfed down every day. Misty was in the kitchen when her friend got there, opening the door and coming right in. Caroline made a face at the orange juice at the table, but she drank down her entire glass. Water? Misty asked when she'd finished. Caroline nodded. Where's the bacon? Misty handed her a plate of bacon and then served her a helping of a casserole which was a bit healthier. She'd added a little spinach to the recipe, chopped extremely fine, hoping her friend would ignore it and eat it anyway. Caroline sighed as she stared down into her plate. Seriously? You're trying to get green stuff into my diet again? She sounded extremely disappointed, which didn't surprise Misty a bit. Misty laughed and took a tiny portion for herself, knowing Micah was planning to feed her lunch. The green stuff is good for you, she said, taking a seat at the table. Caroline crunched into her bacon. So, what's the big emergency? I got up early for this, you know. I do know, and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so here's the deal. I kind of started dating Micah, the man who owns and manages the hotel in town. He first came here to yell at me about my advertisements talking about the hot springs, but when I grabbed him and kissed him, we kind of realized we liked each other. Misty took a big gulp of her orange juice. Anyway, we had supper last night, and it was really fun. He had me throw a rock into a fountain at the hotel for some ridiculous reason, and then he drove me back here. After the rock, he barely spoke to me. Caroline nodded. Any idea why? Did you say something you shouldn't have? 
Only Caroline knew Misty well enough that she felt like she should ask that question. She picked up her fork and started painstakingly removing the spinach from the rest of the casserole. I didn't. It was like he was talking one minute and not talking the next. He sent me a text later, and I asked if I'd made him mad, but he said he just had stuff he needed to think about. What is there to think about? None of it made any sense, and she was about to go insane if she didn't figure out why it was happening. I'm not sure. Maybe he's so overwhelmed with love for you, he realizes he needs to propose immediately and be married by Monday afternoon. That's kind of how Ted was, but he was really vocal about it. I really don't think that's it, Misty said, shaking her head. We've only been on two dates, and the first was just supper at my house. She knew he'd mentioned marriage at supper the previous night, but he wasn't seriously contemplating it, was he? It had all been a joke she was sure. Ted proposed to me as his way of introducing himself. Seriously, I did not know the man's name before he proposed. Caroline shrugged. It could be that's what's going on. When do you see him again? This afternoon. He's supposed to text and let me know what time. He wants me to meet his dog. Misty thought it was silly to make a date to meet a dog, but it was nice as well. His dog? That's a new one, isn't it? Caroline grinned. Misty jumped when her phone indicated a text, and she picked the phone up immediately. He'll be here at one. To take you to meet his dog, Caroline shook her head, laughing softly. That's hilarious. And we're going on a picnic that he's providing, Misty said. She knew it was strange, but she really didn't care. She liked the idea of meeting his dog. And you're meeting his dog. Caroline started giggling again and Misty had to join in. I guess it does sound absurd when you put it that way. I've never even heard of such a thing, Caroline said. Ted took me to meet his family and his grandfather's pig, but not his dog. Wait, Mr. Cauldron has a pig? Oh, yeah. He lives in the house and everything. It's craziness. Caroline grinned. I love that family so much. They make me feel like I'm one of them. I can see why, Misty said. I'm nervous about seeing Micah today. She needed her friend to make her stop feeling nervous. Why wasn't Caroline doing her job? How was that kiss? What kiss? Misty asked. Caroline sighed dramatically. You said you kissed him when he came over to yell at you. Oh, that kiss. Well, truthfully, all of our kisses have been amazing. That one was fun, though, because I grabbed the front of his shirt and just pulled him to me. Best. Kiss. Ever. Just thinking about it had her tingling all over again. Caroline grinned. He makes your toes curl, doesn't he? He makes all of me curl. My toes, my hair, even my eyeballs. There's something about the man that just makes me see fireworks when he kisses me. Misty leaned back in her chair and smiled, remembering. I hope he kisses me today, and I don't have to take matters into my own hands again. But trust me, if he doesn't, I will. I'm so not afraid to just grab the man and plant one on him. Did you tell him about your no-sex before marriage rule? Caroline knew all of Misty's secrets and she wasn't afraid to bring them up when the opportunity arose. Misty nodded. I told him he wasn't allowed to do me without being legally wed and all that garbage. She sighed. I hope he gets through whatever he's thinking about fast, because I don't really want to stop him when he kisses me, and I know he doesn't want to stop. For the first time in her life, she was tempted to break her own rules, and that put her in dangerous territory. Caroline grinned. You'll love it when you actually get a chance to do it. Marriage is amazing. Yeah. Rub it in why don't you? Oh, don't worry. I will. Caroline took a bite of the casserole that she'd carefully picked every piece of spinach out of. 
Hey, this is good when you don't have to eat the green stuff. She sounded surprised. Did you even try the green stuff? Misty asked, wondering why she even tried to get Caroline to eat anything that wasn't garbage. Of course not. I have standards. Misty had no idea why the conversation with Caroline made her feel better. Maybe because it was just so normal. The two of them had conversations like that practically every day, and this one felt the same as a million before it. I'm so glad we're living close to each other again. Do you have any idea how much I missed you when you went away to college and abandoned me? Caroline laughed. You were not abandoned, and you know it. We talked every single week, and you know it. That's true. I would have rather had you there than a telephone, but oh well, I'm not leaving my band B, and I know you're not leaving Ted, so we're going to be together forever. Misty was thrilled that even though they hadn't settled in Burnsville, Minnesota, the town they'd grown up in together, that they were still near each other. It felt like all was right with the world when Caroline was around. Yes, we are. Finally. The two of them had been best friends since they were in kindergarten, and they had chosen very different life paths. Caroline was working on her doctorate in psychology while Misty didn't have a single day of post-secondary education. That was all right, though. They were still friends, and they always would be. You know, if you'd hurry and get married, we can make sure our little girls are best friends. Caroline grinned at Misty, who shrugged. A few days ago, I would have told you the mere idea was insanity. Now, I'm not so sure. Caroline put down the bacon in her hand and really looked at Misty. You really like this Micah guy, don't you? Misty nodded emphatically. Haven't you been listening? Yes, I really do. He came in here yelling, and all I could think about was how sexy he was. Caroline shook her head. I've never seen you so serious about a man. That's because I've never been this serious about a man. Never, in my whole entire life. Well. Maybe you two really will get married, and our kids can play together. Caroline looked excited at the prospect. Maybe. Misty stood up and started to clean up the mess from their brunch. She put the leftover casserole into a Tupperware bowl, knowing she'd happily eat the leftovers for breakfast for a few days. Caroline finished her own breakfast, and she got to her feet. Thanks for luring me here with bacon. Skip the green crap next time, will you? She hugged Misty tightly. You have fun, and I'll see you in a few days. I want to know the minute he proposes. Misty shook her head. I refuse to promise to let you know the minute he proposes, because I get to take some time to respond and wait until he's gone, but then I will call you, and we can squeal together. Caroline looked at her friend, smiling and nodding. You know he's going to be asking soon. I daydream that he's going to be asking soon. I know nothing about what he's going to do, and that's that. Sure, it is. I've never seen you so happy. I sure hope he's the one. You deserve to have a man who treats you like a queen. Every woman does. Misty went back to sticking dishes in the dishwasher knowing the only work that would be done before Micah got there was cleaning. She was a nervous cleaner, and though she hated it, she would clean for hours if she was nervous. And she was very nervous at the moment, not knowing what it was he wanted to talk to her about. And what if his dog didn't like her? She usually got on well with animals, but it was always a possibility, and would it mean he was finished with her? Don't wear a hole in the counter, before he gets here. Caroline grinned and raised a hand in a wave, leaving the way she'd come. A moment later, Misty saw her jog past on the sidewalk, and she knew her friend would do a full round of the entire town before she went home. She had to run off her breakfast. Misty was ready when Micah got there, and he smiled at her, which made her feel a little better. Are you ready? he asked. Misty nodded. She'd pulled her hair back into a French braid and added a little lipstick. She was wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, 
which was perfect attire for meeting a dog and for a picnic. She hoped. And he could just deal with the blue paint on her legs, because it wasn't coming off anytime soon. No matter what she did, it seemed to be a permanent part of her. There must have been something mixed in with that paint, because she'd never had paint stick for so long. He led her to his truck, and she could see a picnic basket in the back. You have a picnic basket? she asked, surprised. I borrowed it from my mom. He'd felt terribly embarrassed having to ask for it, so he didn't want to talk about it any more than he already had. He wasn't sure if she would think it was cheating that he'd had his mother pack their lunch as well, but it was better than his cooking. Anything was better than his cooking. So, we're going to your place, right? To see Princess? He nodded. We'll start out at my place, and then we'll get her and walk to a picnic destination. A picnic destination? she asked. Do you have a place in mind? It sounded like he had a mysterious place he was taking her to, and she tried not to giggle, thinking about it. He kept her on her toes, and she liked that a lot. Of course, I do. I couldn't take a beautiful girl out on a date and not have a destination in mind, could I? I guess not. Misty watched his profile as he drove out of town in the opposite direction than the Cauldron Ranch. So, your parents own a ranch? Sort of, but not really. They call their property a ranch, but they don't have any animals. It's just a big property, and there's lots of room to ride on our four-wheelers, ride horses, and recreate. It was once a working ranch, but running a ranch and a hotel became too much, so now it's just a piece of land that we call a ranch. Sounds fun to me. I can't wait to see it. There's a little pond on the property that's full of fish, and I like to hang out there sometimes. I don't like to fish much, but I do like to stare out at the water and contemplate my existence. Do you spend a lot of time contemplating your existence? Misty asked. She'd never heard anyone put it quite so well. She had been known to contemplate her existence as well. She loved water, or just staring at mountains. Thankfully, they were both very close by if she felt like exploring. Sometimes. Not always. He grinned over at her as he turned onto a dirt road. This is the back way to my cabin. My parents never come this way. So, there's no chance we'll run into them today? That might be good. I didn't get all the paint off me, and I don't want your parents to think I'm some sort of hooligan running around, covered in blue paint all the time. Why would you want them to believe you're something you're not? He asked, grinning at her. She swatted at him. Don't be mean to me now. She loved that he already felt comfortable teasing her. It was strange how connected she felt to the man. Why not? Teasing you is so much fun. He stopped the truck in front of a small cabin, obviously just big enough for one, or maybe a couple of newlyweds. A dog came running from behind the house, barking as she went, but she stopped beside the truck, her tail wagging enthusiastically. Misty waited for Micah to get out and calm the excited dog, and then she followed suit. Hi there, princess. Princess wagged her tail at Misty, who dropped to her knees, to bury her face in the dog's neck. Who's a good puppy? Princess licked her face, and Misty giggled, pulling back. Apparently, Princess liked her after all, and she wouldn't have to deal with the repercussions of the man's dog hating her. I guess she'll be all right with her coming on our picnic with us, he asked, watching her with his dog and feeling like everything was right with his world. Of course. She's family. I'm just a visitor. Micah took the picnic basket in one hand and her hand in the other, calling Princess to follow them. They began walking away from the road, and she looked all around her. This is such a beautiful place to live. You were raised here? Her own upbringing had consisted of city streets and the occasional park. She couldn't imagine living in a place like this. Even in Cauldron Valley, she lived in town, not in the country like this. Not in the cabin, but yeah. Here on the ranch. 
And I know you have a sister, she hoped her prodding would help him to tell her about his family. I actually have three younger sisters. The one you saw at the front desk is the oldest. The other two are still in high school. She eyed him curiously. Big age gap? He nodded. Yeah, and all of us have both the same parents. My next sister is ten years younger than I am. I see, Misty said, nodding. Are you close to your sisters? He shrugged. As close as I can be with the age difference. The youngest is fifteen years younger than I am, and she was three when I started college. She's obsessing about boys and makeup, and I run the hotel. Not exactly a lot in common there. I can see that. And your parents have already retired with two kids still in high school? Yup. They like to just take off in the RV for months at a time. They're trying to stay put until Esther is out of school, but it's hard for them. My parents are nomads at heart. This is the first summer they've stayed home in years. Mom said she didn't feel safe traveling because of the hand sanitizer shortage, whatever that means. Sometimes she doesn't make a lot of sense. They stopped in front of a large pond, and he set the picnic basket on the ground and pulled a quilt from it. The quilt had been pieced with different types of food and drink. One block was a teapot and teacups. Another was a picnic basket that looked remarkably like the one they were using. One had just a bunch of grapes. She smiled. That quilt is amazing. My mom made it specifically for picnics. She thought we needed something that just screamed picnic, and this is what she came up with. He shrugged. His mother was a bit of a mystery because she thought so differently than he did. I adore it. Does she quilt a lot? Nope. This is the only quilt she's ever made. She said never again. She tries all kinds of hobbies, but when it comes right down to it, she's never happy with them, so she buys all this stuff and then she stops and tries something else. Does that frustrate your dad? I think it did at first, but now he just shrugs and moves on with his life. It doesn't help to be upset with her, because she's the best mom ever. Micah sat down on the blanket and started doling out the food. I thought a snacky lunch would be nice. I have crackers, cheese, summer sausage, and egg salad. And I think mom threw a dessert in there, but I'm not sure. Your mom made our picnic lunch for us? Misty was surprised. She'd expected him to do it himself. Knowing that his mother knew they were off on a date together felt strange. Micah nodded. I figured you'd rather not be poisoned, so I enlisted the aid of my mother. Probably for the best. I guess you could have just done grocery store foods too. I didn't think of that. I have a mother, and that's what she's for, right? Misty laughed, shaking her head. My mother is anything but domestic. I was a latchkey kid, and I learned to cook early on, so I could feed us both. Besides, my mother hated cooking, and if I didn't want something straight from a can, I needed to learn to cook. There was no real option. That's just sad. She didn't have cookies ready when you got home from school? She got home hours after I did, Misty said with a shrug. I went to Caroline's house after school a lot, and her mom had cookies waiting for us. She had felt a lot more loved once she'd started sharing Caroline's idyllic childhood. She loved her mother a great deal, but Caroline's mom made her feel more loved in a lot of ways. Her heart had broken when Mrs. Deaton had died when she and Caroline were sixteen. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you had somewhere to go to feel loved. My mom made sure I felt loved. It just wasn't quite the same as it was at Caroline's house. Misty shrugged, not sure she could describe the difference. I can see that. What about your father? Misty shrugged. He married mom just because she was pregnant, and he took off, before I was two. I don't remember him at all, and he never had a place in my life. He sent his support checks every month, but he never wanted to see me. 
there had always been a father-sized gap in her life. Again, Caroline's dad had tried to fill the hole left by her own father, but it just hadn't been the same. I can't imagine not wanting to see my daughter. He shook his head. Have you ever thought about trying to find him? Nope. If he wasn't interested in me, then I'm not interested in him. From what mom has said, he was in the Twin Cities area my whole life, which is where I grew up. He could have come to see me at any time, but he chose not to. Misty tried to sound nonchalant about the whole situation, but it still hurt her to think about sometimes. She tried to be thankful that he had paid child support so she and her mother hadn't gone without. Does he have a family now? Micah felt terrible for her, and he wanted to tell her he would never run away from his wife and child, but he had a feeling she would have to experience loyalty like that to believe it existed. I've told you everything I know about the man. What does your mom do? he asked. She's a nurse. She started as a nurse's aide when I was little, but she slowly made her way through college. She graduated from nursing school when I finished eighth grade. She made more money after that, but she still didn't have a lot of time. Misty shrugged. It is what it is. I love my mom, and we've always been really close. But she didn't have time for you. Micah covered her hand with his. I'm sorry. Misty frowned. I'm not though. Mom taught me some very valuable lessons. The value of going after what you want in life. The love of learning. The idea that a woman could do whatever she wanted to do, as long as she worked hard enough. Who could ask for more in life than that? She didn't regret her childhood one iota. It had made her the strong, independent woman she was. Micah nodded. I guess. Seriously, I think I had the best home life experience for who I wanted to be. I love that I'm a strong, independent woman who has never needed to lean on a man. Have you ever wanted to lean on a man? He asked, looking at her, curiously. I'm not sure. I've never been attracted to a man enough that I wanted to lean on him. Not before this week anyway. Micah smiled, and she was surprised by how his blue eyes seemed to light up. He reached into the bottom of the picnic basket and pulled something out. Lean on me forever then. Be my wife. 